YouTube, Double D here with Turnage Dubois. Welcome back. Today we're gonna to try a new process for me. Um, I've actually done it once before, but I wanted to share this because this is something I hadn't ever thought of before. But I got this uh, pen blank from the old Kansas City Municipal Stadium. So Kansas City Municipal Stadium opened in 1923. It was the home for the Kansas City Monarchs. Uh, it was home to the Kansas City Athletics. It was home to the Kansas City Royals and the Chiefs um, all during that time period up until 1973. In 1973, it closed. Uh, the Royals moved into Kauffman Stadium. The Chiefs moved into Arrowhead. And in 1975, they tore down Kansas City Municipal Stadium. So this is a piece of history that you cannot find. It's not gonna be around much longer. Um, but I'm gonna try an eccentric turn I say that it's more of an offset turn for this. So I'm gonna fill in that hole uh, with some CA glue, probably some like five minute epoxy. So that's what I wanna do there. Then I'm gonna cut this, I'm gonna turn a pin, but I'm gonna turn it offset so we hopefully keep some of that nice blue paint from where this was on the seat showing for that uh, little unique look to it. Obviously this piece is curved, but when I cut it for the pin blanks, it's going to square up pretty good for each piece. So we'll be happy with that. But at any rate, let's get the process started. All right, so Starbond, and I'll put a link to their uh, info down below. You can use a coupon code DD15, or you can use the link in the description for 15% off your order. But they make this five minute epoxy. So I'll be mixing that up. I'm going to use the Ruby Red Galaxy from Black Diamond Pigments. I decided to go with red in celebration of the Chiefs since the blank itself is blue for the Royals. It's a different color blue, but that's okay. Um, but that'll give it that extra contrast that we want. So we'll be mixing that in this little tray that they sent along with a stirrer. So we'll be mixing that glue and then we'll get that uh, hole filled in and we will go from there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've got a little bit of tape. I'm going to tape this up so that that glue won't run out of the hole. That'll give us a nice starting surface to work with and we'll go from there. Nice thing I like about these is they have these screw on caps. so. Easy to put it back together. And some of these blanks, uh, I did some um, University of Kansas blanks before that had holes in them like this for the bolts and screws. So what I did there was I used a golf tee and I inserted it. The downside with this is this is significantly larger than that golf tee. So that won't help out too awfully much with what I needed to do to fill that in. I'm gonna use a drop of the red alcohol ink as well, just to help it with the color. All right, we're gonna let that cure up and uh, then we will be back. And we are back. We have our glued up piece. So we got the glue in there. We're now going to mark this and cut it. So I'm gonna leave that red mark up near the top. Cause like I said, I do wanna keep that there, but I also wanna get some of the blue paint on it. So we'll do both of these, get them cut up marked and go from there so i uh let's get that going so as you can see it is um curved but not going to worry about that too much because we'll be able to accommodate that appropriately now i do want this red area up near the top so i'm actually going to switch this around 
Based off of this, we're gonna go right about there, cut that part off. So that's gonna give us our piece there, and then here what we're gonna do is we'll mark that and get that cut. Uh, then we'll get that drilled up and we'll go from there. All right, so we have our pen blank cut and I apologize that the drill that the um, camera didn't wanna cooperate when I was uh, doing the sawing. So I apologize I didn't get that, but you've all seen me do the cutting before. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to drill this up. So I'm just gonna adjust this for the tightness based on the size of the blank so that this will fasten down pretty close. So the one thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to keep, like I said, I wanna keep some of this paint on here if I possibly can. So I'm not gonna drill this dead center. That's one of the big reasons I'm not drilling this on my drill, on my lathe because that's gonna automatically center it. So I'm going to take this and I'm gonna drill it a little bit off center so that when I turn it, we can keep that color on, on the piece. So as you can see, that's significantly off center from where the piece would normally be. So, piece goes like this. So I'm gonna drill it off center down here as well so that we can keep pretty close to that same graining pattern throughout, but I gotta change drill bits. And we have that offset as well. So when we turn it, we can uh, work to keep some of that area flat for the coloring. So let's get that glued up. And I've talked about quite a few times, I always like to make sure that this is gonna go through okay. We'll have plenty of room. So always take the extra time to do that just to make sure we don't run an issue. See, so there, it's not wanting to go all the way through. So if it's not wanting to go all the way through, we just wanna push on it, make sure we can either get it all the way through or get it figured out. So we don't run into that issue. So if it is a little bit snug, just work it back and forth a little bit and uh, get that going. All right, so both of those went through. So now we'll get that glued up and we will be using our medium from Starbond to get those glued. All right, we'll let that glue cure up and then we'll be back to trim them off and uh, go from there. All right, so what I'm doing this way, because I have it off center and I don't wanna tear up one of the ends or anything on that thinner portion, I have a setup here with my sander um, to where this will come out and I'll just slide the blank over the piece and then I'll be able to use that to sand that back so it's nice and flat when flush with the end. So we'll get that done and uh, go from there. These are just taps. I just use a different size for each one of the pin blanks. So I wanna make sure it's a nice good fit so it keeps it straight uh, with this bracket. So I just adjust it to where it's pretty close to the sandpaper itself. That way it won't cause any issues, but it will keep the piece perpendicular as I need it to to make sure that that uh, stays exactly how we want it. So I just go until the metal is shiny on both ends, nice and flat, and then we'll line it up, mark the insides of the tubes, and then we'll go and get it turned. So see you over at the lathe in a couple of moments. All right, so we have that all set up, ready to turn, got it lined up correctly. Uh, I'm gonna be using our D-Way skew on this, and so we'll get to turning.
Now I will be stopping this relatively frequently just because I want to be able to check on it uh, as we're turning. That will sand off, so I think we're good there. Now we'll get this top part turned. Unfortunately, I'm not going to get, uh, I don't get to keep any of the blue paint up here, but I've got a little bit down here. So that shows the color of the seats. And then, of course, the bolt hole uh, where the seat was held together. So we'll get that sanded and finished and assembled. Okay, so we have that sanded up to 320 grit. So we are going to clean this with some denatured alcohol, just like we always do. Get a nice look at that wood there. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to hit it with 400 grit and then we'll get our finish on the piece. So our, for our finish, we will use Brad's tongue wax kit. Um, and I'll probably use the abrasive paste, even though it won't be necessary really. Uh, but we'll get that going. All right, I'm gonna to touch that up real quick just to get any of the dust off residuals. And then we are going to use our abrasive paste from Brad's workbench. Link to his Etsy store down below. So give that a try and we will get this finished up. And for our finish, Brad's Tongue Wax. So we will put this on, let it set for 15 to 20 minutes, then we'll come back and get it all buffed off, worked in, and then we will get this assembled. This gives it a nice, durable matte finish. 
Um, I use this, I started using this three years ago, two and a half years ago when I really first got started. Um, Brad had me try some and I got hooked on it. And so I did my very first pin for myself with this and it still looks as good as it did the day I made it. So uh, we'll get this going, we'll let this sit and then we will be back. All right, and I know I've put pins together before, but uh, I like to go through it just so once again people can see uh, how this, how I do this with my process. So this is, of course, my uh, favorite kit with it being the Tycoon. So put the cap on, put the tip part on, and then we're going to line up how we want the uh, the clip to go down the piece so we know that this is the middle portion this is also the middle portion so i want to kind of look at how that's going to line up with the graining so that it lines up appropriately and it's actually going to go this way so um so yeah i want that red accentuated so i'm going to keep that clip off to the side so we're going to put that clip basically right in the middle of where those two uh, bolt holes are that are filled with the five minute epoxy with the red mica powder. All right, so then we have our beauty ring that we're gonna put over it. We always put this wider part towards the pin body itself. Normally I do these one at a time, but I'm gonna do them both because I know that this painted area is closer to the bottom of the pin. So this just saves me one step, but only because I know that that's exactly how it's supposed to line up. Once we get that seated in, we're good. We know that's the back end. So with the back end, this metal cap goes on here. So we have our cap there and that holds the spring. So here we have our spring. It's very small, so just don't lose it. That's never fun. Then you put the pin cartridge ink, sorry, the ink cartridge in and twist down the nib and you have that part all ready to go. So then I always take the cap portion, screw it on, and then I want to line up the graining the way it's going to match up. So. Get this started here, and then we will push it together. If there's anything that it cuts off, any of that plastic in there that cuts off, you just wanna make sure and clean that up or else you'll have little strings hanging out. And there is the finished pin. You can see a little bit of the paint around the resin or the see the five minute epoxy glue you can see a little bit of the paint because they painted that bolt hole and then the paint where the seating surface was so that's where somebody would have been sitting um, on this pen but the grainy lines up real good all the way around pretty happy with it remember this was a curved piece so it's never going to be perfect but we'll do a wrap up in just a minute hey everybody welcome back hope you enjoyed that project i know i just did a pen a little bit ago but this was a pretty special pen um being in the Kansas City metropolitan area within an hour or so away and the history and the significance of this piece. So this stadium was torn down in 1976. Um, so it has not been in existence for 47 years. So it's pretty interesting what um, the history that this has gone through. Uh, Jackie Robinson played for the Kansas City Monarchs in 1945 before he was signed with the Brooklyn Dodgers. So that's an amazing piece of history that this seat was in existence at that point and someone would have been sitting in this seat and watched Jackie Robinson play baseball. Um, super excited to show this technique, which is something newish to me. I've done it, like I said, uh, a little bit before, but never on video, so I wanted to show that. Uh, if this is your first time here, please do consider subscribing. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. Either way, leave a comment, feedback down below. 
love and appreciate them and that's how I grow and we'll catch you all next time.